Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do my first impression slash disassembly of this beautiful beast, the Something Obscene Company J Cape version 3, made by Riot. And this is the flipper version with the carbon fiber and the dark purple anno on the hardware and the frame lock side, black clip, black and uh, satin blade. Look at this uh, compound grind, hollow grind here, flat up here. Just some fantastic work from Riot and a fantastic design from Felix over at Something Obscene Company. And I want to go over something I mentioned in my, excuse me, something I mentioned in my unboxing. So I got confused because <clears throat> originally what happened was, I, you can't find these, right? You can't just buy these online at Knife Center or whatever. So I went looking and Kyle Lanfear sent me a couple links. There's some websites in Germany. One is called battlemerchant.com, I think. And another one had a weird name, I can't remember. And they sell like really nice premium knives um, to Europe. And you can buy them and have them sent here. It's not like some big, huge hassle. You just pay with PayPal or whatever. And, of course, you're going to pay a little more for shipping. And you're going to pay a little more because you have to do the conversion rate. But it's probably going to be less than paying 500 bucks on the secondary. Like, I saw this knife for 359 euros or something. Now, I don't know what that comes out to. It would probably be like 400 bucks, you know. Um, which again is better than the secondary here, uh, in most cases anyway, but definitely check out their Facebook group. Um, I forget what the group's called. It's not something obscene company group. It's like obscene group or something. I don't know, something like that, but, uh, maybe I'll link it below. But anyway, um, that was the only place I could find them. So I reached out to Felix who runs something obscene company. He's the guy behind it. And I was asking him, like, hey, uh, do you have any that I could buy? Because I knew he was just at a show and maybe, you know, people were buying them there. Maybe he brought some. Um, or should I buy from this website? Like, do you think this website is legit? And he was like, yeah, you could buy from Battle Merch. Um, and he's like, I recommend you get the flamed titanium one. Because they did have a flame titanium handle one with a black uh, PVD coated blade or DLC coated blade. But <clears throat> I'm not a big blackout type guy. And I honestly do prefer carbon fiber in some cases, especially with a bigger knife because of the weight. Um, and the other one that I, the one I really wanted was the, the one everybody wants, the flame titanium, uh, plain titanium with satin blade and then the bronze or gold accents. <laughs> Um, it's the one uh, Joe has from the Knife Whisperer. Check out his channel, by the way. And, um, yeah, so they didn't have that one available, obviously. They were all sold out, even on those European sites. And, of course, uh, Felix didn't have any. Um, so this is where the confusion came in. When you look at the pictures on Battle Merchant, or pretty much most retailers, I think, the way this model looks is it kind of looks like they call it purple slash carbon fiber so i thought it was purple carbon fiber and then the the, the clip side and the hardware all looks pink like maybe it's a bright purple but it's like a pink um and that's what i thought i was getting because then when i was talking to felix um i said hey man uh he said i only have the purple ones left and I was like, uh, well, whatever. I like color. Like, I'll check it out. And if, worst case, if I don't like it, um, I'll have somebody in the community anno it for me. And at one point in the conversation, he showed me this knife. Like, a picture of this. And I thought this was, like, a modded one. Because, again, none of the variants I saw on the Battle Merchant website looked like this. So I thought this was like one he had modded. And when he sent that picture, I was like, oh, that's perfect. Can I buy that one? And then he kind of just said like, well, I think you should get the flame titanium one. And he kind of kept saying that. So I thought he was like trying to tell me, one, he thinks that one's better. But two, maybe this was like for a special project or something. And he wasn't comfortable selling it to me. 
And anyway, so then when I bought one, you know, he said, here, you know, send me the money, whatever, send him the money. And I thought I was getting a pink one. So then I unboxed it. Obviously, if you saw that, I was confused. Um, and I reached out to him and he said what happened was he didn't like the way those came out. So that picture that I saw is accurate, but that's what they looked like before. And I don't know if the ones from Germany do still look like that, but the ones he had, at least he sent back. So I think what happened was he sent the whole batch back of the pink ones or light purple, whatever. And he had Riot redo the Anna. So that's what this is. They redid it in this darker purple and you can see some splotchy type areas. I don't know. I feel like that's just natural with Anno. If I were to like really clean this down, it would look perfect. Um, and it doesn't bother me in the least. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic in this purple color um, with the carbon fiber and this two-tone blade. I honestly could not be happier with having this one. <laughs> I think I might like it better than the satin uh, yeah maybe the only thing better would be a satin blade but honestly i i'm not a big bronze guy so i think i like this handle better anyway so i really kind of want to get another one now not so i can sell one um so i can have two when i have a knife that i really like i want multiples that's just how i am now i guess um uh, but anyway let's get into this that's the background on that knife in case you were wondering why i was so damn confused I should just need a T8. I will say this pivot has walked a little bit, but I think that's okay. I, it doesn't bother me. It is Riot, which it normally doesn't happen with them, but you have this huge blade slinging out of there and cracking open, right? And then coming down and cracking close. And I think that's just a lot on the pivot. Um, so we'll see what's in here. I'm going to try to be really careful. I have a T8. Yeah, see that came right out. I didn't even have to. I barely had to remove or put any pressure on that. And you guys know how much I love Riot builds because it's just. Usually it's just going to be these three screws and then I'm going to be into this knife. We're going to get it cleaned up and then I'm just going to put these three screws back in maybe with some Loctite, and we're going to be good to go. Um, so that's usually how it goes in this scenario, but we'll see if anything pops up. So here's the inside. Now that's interesting. Okay. So these are bigger bearings. Looks like we're looking at quarter inches. And I may try to swap these. Now, first off the bat, you can see there's something going on in here. I guess when they redid the Anno, they only did the outside. So, or maybe they did part of it. I mean, it looks completely different, right? So maybe this was the purple that it would have been, which I actually kind of like that anyway. I'm half tempted to order one from Battle Merch <laughs> and just see what shows up. I don't really need to. Here's your titanium backspacer. Very lightweight. Cool. Um... I don't see much going on here, guys. Uh, again, very simple build. Again, it's Riot. Let me get something to clean up. <clears throat> I don't know if I even need the alcohol. Pivot comes out like that. Very simple construction, guys. And let's just see if I rub that down, what happens. Is that coloring coming off? Yeah, look at that. It's like that coloring is coming off of there. But it's not like coming onto here. Let me see what happens when I get some alcohol involved. And guys, I don't really care about the inside of the knife. Uh, it functions flawlessly. Uh, it locks up tight. Uh, there's no issues there, so I'm not going to like worry about it being a little splotchy on the inside. If that's what it took 
to get the knife the way he wanted it. Um, I am absolutely cool with having a little bit of this splotchy shit going on in here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I think it's all supposed to be this color, and as I'm cleaning it, it's coming off. Like, when I do it over here, it just kind of cleans the anno. And, uh, guys, the best way to clean anno, as far as I know, is to use Windex. Um, so, I don't know. You'll see there's no purple on here. Uh, this is anno, guys. This is not paint. Um, so basically what that means is this titanium was put into a liquid. I think, is it water or some kind of, I think it's just water. Uh, like deionized water or something. And then electricity is actually passed through the water and maybe attached to the knife maybe is a, is a line as well. And then somehow the electricity anodizes, changes the titanium color. And depending on the voltage, you get a different color. It's really, really cool. Uh, Anno is like super sciencey and crazy to me. Uh, obviously, I'm an idiot, so I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, different voltages give you different colors. Like if you see uh, like my Holt Haptic, not mine because it's plain titanium, but most of them that are anode they will list the exact voltage of the color, which is pretty cool to me. Uh, you will see this is CPM 20 CV. Um, on the box, it said Bowler CPM 20 CV or something. It was weird. I think they're just used to using M390. It is a little bit different to see Riot using 20 CV. So I don't know if maybe he had steel from another project that he sent them or something. I don't know. Because I know, I believe he used to work with Wii, like a lot of manufacturers, or a lot of uh, makers, they work with Wii, or Best Tech, and eventually if they uh, start to figure out what's best, they end up with Riot. Um, they just are absolutely killing it in the, um, the OEM game. I'm going to get out one of these brushes, so let me do this. So I'm going to get out one of these KPL brushes. Sorry. Um, and then I also am going to get out new bottles of KPL. Original. KPL heavy. And my Permatex here. So... KPL was kind enough to send me new bottles. They actually sent me like a care package, guys. Um, and I'm going to be using a lot of it for my 1K giveaway, which we hit last night, guys. Thank you so much. Um, but I asked them to send me new bottles so I could show them off. Because when I do these videos, I only have these bottles that are completely destroyed. Even though I say KPL all the time, I just figured... I could get some free bottles and they could get some advertising because uh, I love their shit, right? So I have the KPL there and then I have these cool little microfiber sticks that they're like little Q-tips with microfiber on the end and they are perfect, I have found, for getting inside a bearing case. So, or a bearing slot, whatever you want to call it. So I just go like this. And they're running around the outside, and you'd be surprised how you can't get in there with a cloth. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's already picked up a good amount of gunk. I'll just do that on both sides. I mean, anything you can get clean will um, help with your bearings and help with your action. So, I always try to get in all the crevices and cracks and crevices. Uh, sexual innuendos are always preferred here on Lefty EDC. Get in there, get the detent ball, I'm just using it, whatever, right? You can also get into these spacers like this. Just a really interesting tool and you can um, clean these and reuse them, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, I usually just try to take some alcohol like I have on here and kind of wipe it like that and accidentally break it. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go back on. So, oh, look at that. Popped right back on and it's still sturdy. All right, cool. 
So I'm gonna put that back because I only have 12 of them or whatever. Uh, they are reusable, obviously. Uh, probably be better to just rinse it. I don't know, but uh, they are only like four bucks, seven bucks ship. So really cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, KPL sent me two sets of these. So I have another set of uh, heavy and original for you guys to go in the giveaway. And then they also sent like this maintenance kit. It has those uh, Q-tips. It has a KPL original. It has a little thing of Loctite and some cloths. I think it's really cool. Um, all right, so let's get this party started, shall we? You know what I'm going to do. These are just basic uh, brass cage bearings. So I'm going to reach into my drawer of goodies, and I'm going to go for some Gillians. So this is a knife I really like a lot, so I'm going to try to put Gillians in it. Um, you know, I, if it's like a knife that I kind of like, <laughs> then I might put Skiffs in it. But I reserve... The Gillian salt and pepper bearings for the best of the best, okay? Um, so if that tells you anything about this knife, there you go. We'll see if it works first, obviously, before I go putting the uh, other bearings away. Let's see, does it fit in here? Yeah, and it spins. Should be money, so let's get this potty started, shall we? Get my pivot that I didn't clean. So yeah, guys, I'm not normally a blackout type guy when it comes to knives and stuff, even though I bought some lately, like the Ortis and the uh, Iron Pup, which I just sold. I was not a huge fan of that Iron Pup, um, and I was purging the collection, so... It just became one of the purges. Wow, that pivot screw was dirty as hail. All right, so normally this side, I forget. I think it came out of this one. Yeah, because that's where we went. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, uh, Riot does use a spinning pivot. I've complained about that enough. I think there's a reason behind it. Somebody told me um, it actually helps the the... It helps from having a pivot loosen, actually, apparently. Which sounds ironic. Um, but, sorry, I just absolutely drenched this thing in KPL. I gotta get used to the new um, bottle here. Little dots. There, okay, that should be enough. All right, one on. And then here we have... A spot for bearings and also the detent ball track. Guys, I have found. Okay, so maybe it wasn't the old bottles I had. Maybe these containers just tend to really shoot out KPL. Let me just see if I can get a drop. Okay. Um, wow, that feels different than the heavy I have. It feels a lot more. Look at it, it just keeps coming out. Calm down. It feels a lot thicker than the heavy I've had. So maybe they've changed it? I don't know. But I have found that putting heavy on the detent track actually does more, at least I think, than putting... Um, I want to put the stop pin over here. Than putting the regular on the bearings. Honestly, I think it is... Better to do the detent track, ball track, than the uh, bearings. That's just what I've noticed, at least. There we go. Slot that in. All right. So, put a little bit here. Not a lot. Not trying to overdo it here. And then I'll put a little bit right here. And then I'll drop this sucker up, oh, backspacer. I always forget backspacers, don't I? That doesn't look right. Okay, flip it around. All right, pop that sucker on. 
Drop this sucker on top. Riot should kick in right about now and just click right together. Feel like I'm missing something. I think that stop pin doesn't want to seat properly. There we go. Oh, now the pivot came out. So hang on, let me do this. I'm gonna put one screw down here just so we have, we have things a little bit tightened up. All right, now I can shut it and hope the pivot just shoots through. See how that's moving around? I don't know what's going on there, hang on. So it's all together, it's just that pivot is There, I think I got it. Okay. So, pivot screw. Now, of course, I'm going to uh, test everything first. Then I'll go back to putting Loctite in. That's where you got to be careful. We don't want to scratch any screws. Apply the right amount of pressure as you're tightening. You got to double check that pivot screw, make sure it's in there. Yeah, guys, Riot, <laughs> it's just such a pleasure to disassemble and reassemble their knives. Um, I felt like it was going to... I'm going to be careful here. Could just be because it's spinning. Yep, there it is. Try to be very careful. It's hard to over tighten with this driver, but you never know. I think we're good. All right, blade play. None. Action. Okay. Centering. God, lighting is always so hard. Okay. It's the best way for me to do it. That looks dead nuts to me, guys. Yep. It's dead nuts. Okay. So, now it becomes a game. Do we let it break in? I mean, these bearings, guys, we all know what's going to happen. They're going to break in. And they're going to be absolutely fantastic. And I'm betting if I backed off that pivot just a cinch, it would already do it. But maybe I should let them wear in, huh? This thing is just thundering out. It's already starting to free drop. I gotta give it the little shaky shakies. All right, so we've established that it works. So let me, let me put this stuff away, get the Permatex out. Damn it, that means I can't play with this knife today. Fuck. See, I really don't want that to be the case. What I might do no, that doesn't go there. Where is my... Oh, there. Okay. Put the cape yell away. What I might do is play with it. <laughs> See if the pivot walks. Because sometimes adding these bearings really helps. Oh, shit. I threw these in here. Eh, whatever. I have a thing of just all types of bearings. But uh, these work, so they're going to stay in there anyway. Um, what I might do is just play with it today. Uh, by the way, Brian Brown Vulcan bit driver, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I might just play with it and then see how she breaks in, see if it loosens up. Because sometimes adding the Gillian bearings um, actually makes it where the pivot doesn't walk anymore because it allows you to tighten it more than you would with the regular bearings. So it may get to that point where it's not going to walk. Um, and I would much prefer that. Oh, my God. Look at this thing. Yeah. This is after, you know, what, 10 flicks? We're already singing like this. Um, man, an eighth of a turn, and this thing would be free dropping, but I just don't want to do it. Um, guys, this knife is absolutely incredible. It is a sexy 
masterpiece by Felix. Um, something of scene company is on my radar, guys. Anything that they come out with, I'm going to be checking out. Um, now, I'm not into some of the crazy-ass designs, um, but it does make me want to try them just because... Oh, my God. This is a fucking winner, guys. And th there's so many flavors of this. I haven't even mentioned that they come in a thumb stud variant. So you can get basically five different variants, right? You can get this one, which I absolutely love. You can get the plain tie, uh, flame tie with the bronze. You can get the flame tie blackout to so black clip, black blade, fully blacked out blade. You can get a, a JG10 one. Um, so JG10 with i can't remember if it's the two-tone blade i think it might be it could be satin though um but i wouldn't get that just because of the jade um and then i think there's one other variant i'm not even thinking of right now and that's incredible guys like all of that and then they each come in thumb stud or flipper and of course i want flipper for two reasons one thumb studs are getting old for me guys it's just not my thing anymore Two, left-handed, they just seem to be a real bitch uh, because I want to spidey flick them, right? Um, and the lock bar thing is always an issue. So then I'm basically reserved to just thumb flicking and I'm not going to do that. Like I'm going to be tempted and then I'm going to jack my finger up or it's just going to be uncomfortable. So I just went right for flipper and listen to this thing. I mean, it sounds like a rifle. It's incredible. Um, I'm blown away, guys. So, if you can't tell, I absolutely love this thing. First impressions are incredible. Ergos are really good for something that doesn't look like it would be, honestly. Um, this clip is so cool to me. I, I don't know. I go, I'm guessing it's hit or miss, but in this black color, more than anything, it's freaking fantastic. I love the purple. I'm a purple guy. I like purple on my knives. And this is like a bluish purple. I really like that. It's not a blurple. There's a difference to me anyway. Um, it's a bluish purple. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, I love the blade shape. Clip point, drop point, whatever you want to call it with this compound grind. Oh my God, just killed it with this. Absolutely in love. Um, I've been very happy to check out something of Scene Company and arcane designs um these two have just amazed me in the last week or so getting these in and um that's not all guys uh these two guys they collaborated on a knife and it is a crazy ass knife it is called the antimatter and it is a double-edged dagger flipper knife made by riot so both sides, it's completely symmetrical, and both sides have an edge, <laughs> and it's a flipper, um, I have one on the way, so Israel Bacchus from Arcane Design was kind enough to send me one on loan to review on the channel, I just thought it was interesting, I don't know if I want to own one, maybe, um, but I wanted to check it out, and he was kind enough to send me one to check out, and these two guys, look at these knives, Imagine what these two guys putting their brains together can do. And that's what we're going to see. Um, hopefully I'll have it this week and I can uh, get it unboxed and start the process. I won't take that apart because I'm guessing he wouldn't want me to. Um, but yeah, guys, just look. I mean, just so cool. So anyway, that is the Something Obscene Company J-Cape version 3 first impressions and disassembly. Thank you for listening to me rant and rave as usual. I love you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.